Adrian, did you assist? Good evening. Did you assist the others with their tum with their Tumblr account? Sir, good night, sir. Sir, I sent I communicated with a few persons, sir. Not all the class reached out to me. I communicated with a few persons. Some persons said that they never get a chance to go back on it, and some said that they never started. So oh, okay. All yes, right. but I, I tried. Okay. All right. Thanks for trying. Yes, because the first assignment is April 7 and it is based on Google Analytics. So I'm hoping that they sort it out. Yes, sir. Did you see the, 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 the lecture I, I sent to you guys? Sir Adrian, did you see the lecture? Sir, I saw one with the report, some report thing, how the report is to be done. Right, so, so okay, so that's what we're going to focus on today. Right. How to do Google Analytics report because that's what the assignment is going to be based on. I just waiting for two more persons to join the class and then I start. Is it that you guys have a class before me? Yes, sir. We're, we're, our class ended like five minutes before the time. So why where where is everybody? That's that's what I'm, I'm surprised as well, sir, because they, most of us are in, we're in the same class. Okay. 
Adrian, are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, just checking.
All right, I'm going to begin because time is going and I don't understand almost every time on a Wednesday, I have to be waiting on students to join the class. So I have to wait on you on a, on a Monday and I have to wait on you on a Wednesday. I am not willing to do that today. So I suppose those persons will watch the recording. But as I said, this is what the assignment is based on. So we are going to focus now on um, writing the analytics report. And we had looked at some of the terms associated with Google Analytics. And, and technically, as I said before, it's really web analytics, but we're using the more popular um, report form that is used or the more um, the platform that is used by most brands. They use Google and Google um, provides companies with data about their web activities and really customer behavior. So in terms of the report, what exactly is included in the report? You usually comment on audience acquisition behavior and to some extent conversion, all right? And as I said before, you are going to divide into two groups. You're going to be in two groups and do a PowerPoint presentation um, by comparing. I will give you the time period that I want for you to compare. And if I'm saying anything that you don't understand, just let me know. Mrs. Stuart Miller, you are there, right? I'm not feeling well. Okay. So again, this is just a graphical um, representation or, um, of the different types of reports. So it says audience acquisition behavior and conversions. So this is what you are, again, I repeat, this is what you're going to present. And so audience is who, um, who are my customers or who are the persons using my website? Acquisition is where are they coming from? Or just think of acquisition as acquire. Where am I acquiring these customers from to my website? Behaviors, what are they doing on my website? And conversion is, is it, have they taken an action that is beneficial to my company or to my brand? So that's really what you're commenting on. And as I said before too, it is not going to be anything that is going to be very difficult. It's a matter of making, um, recognizing certain trends in the data and also providing some amount of explanation um, about what could have possibly caused an increase or decrease or so forth between the two years or the time period, not two years, the one year that will be compared. It's going to be, 2020 with 2019 or either 2021 compared to 2020. So just a reminder about the terms now, the Google analytic terms that you're supposed to also use in the report. And this is just a reminder about some of the terms that I introduced to you, I think in the last class. So we have users and we have sessions. Anybody remembers what this means? Um, do you remember what this, this term means, um, Adrian? What these terms mean, users versus sessions? Yes, sir. Users, sir, are the, the, yeah. the, the devices. Um, yes. And session would be what? Do you remember about session? So the session, sir, are the, the time, the different time spent. All right, so the time spent on the website. Give me one sec. All right. Why this thing? So users, as you rightly say, are a user is the number of distinct devices, whether the whether it is a laptop, desktop, a smartphone or browser that comes to your website within a given period of time. The session is when the session starts when a user arrives on your website and starts interacting with it. All right, whether they are browsing um, pages, they are clicking buttons or so forth. It ends after 30 minutes of inactivity. <clears throat> so we know that for a session, one session is um, ends at, one session ends after 30 minutes. All right, and then the average session duration now is the total time that a user spends on the website. Page views, when a visitor views a page on the website, and one of the things that you will have to 
um, one of the basic things or the basic metric you want to look at is the number of page views, which indicate really the number of pages a user has interacted with on your website. And this again goes to the whole notion of bounce rate because if the user has only interacted with one of your page and leaves quickly, then of course the bounce rate will be much high or would be much higher. And it could be that the, the, the person did not find the information that they want or they ended up on your web page by accident. All right. So when a user, when a visitor, sorry, views a page on your website and you can and want to have multiple page views per session, in other words, the person is looking at various things on your website. We're not going to go into all of those discussions because we did them already. So bounce rate is when someone comes to your website and only visits one page. A site's bounce rate is a percentage of sessions with only one page view. So a site's bounce rate is a percentage of sessions with only one page view. So it means if the bounce rate is very high, it means that their um, persons are coming to your website, but they're only interacting with one page. That could be a problem or that might indicate a problem, all right? Um, and it measures the stickiness of the website. The exit rate now is which page, where are they leaving your website? So it's a percentage of visitors that leave the session on that page. Conversions now and action completed on a website that is beneficial to the business. And I think we spoke about it before that the, the, the conversion is not just, for example, uh, making a purchase, all right? And I think, so it's not just making a purchase. It, it could be that you want the person to sign up a form. It could be that you want the person to download a document or to upload a document um, or to register for something. All right, and that would be, those things are also conversion. Other things, Google tracks, Google analytic tracks. It's talking about how many website users do you have? Visits, um, you, so when it talks in about traffic, it looks at visits, unique visits, and it looks at geography, you know, in terms of country, sometimes it looks at city. Especially if you're an international brand, you want to know which countries are spending um, more, um, your visitors are coming from, and if you are, uh, let us say you're a national brand, you want to see where in your country most of the visitors are coming from, because it could mean that you could carry some additional um, campaign, for example, on social media targeting those specific areas. So as I said before, one of the things that I have realized with Excelsior Community College in terms of the traffic to our website, they come primarily from Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, and um, Clarendon. And as a result, that's the areas that I usually target when I'm doing social media marketing. The traffic source, where do your users come from? Are they organic? Meaning that they're finding um, the website on Google itself when they go into Google search engine. Are they, for example, going on a social, they're finding you on social media, with the Facebook, Instagram, any, whichever social media platform, because it could be even LinkedIn. Are they finding on another site, a referring site? It could be that they're finding you on another site or are they finding you in online advertising, which could be like a banner ad, especially if you're doing Google advertising using, uh, usually those are used for awareness campaigns. Visit, visitors behavior, you want to know what they are doing or not doing on your website. All right, that is very, very, very important in terms of when you're writing or when you're trying to make sense of the data in Google and um, in Google. Visitor profiling, who are your website users? And this goes a lot with what we call psychographic and demographic information. Are, for example, are more men spending as opposed to women or vice versa? And if that is the case, it means therefore that you probably could, re you could just concentrate your, your, your campaign on only females or only males and do the same on other um, platforms such as social media. Uh, metrics versus dimensions. We mentioned that metrics are anything that can be quantified or um, that provides some kind of quantitative data or numeric data. And dimensions really look at qualitative things such as who are my users and where they're coming from. And again, this is a graphical representation and I'm just going back through some of the information because we're going to go into the Google, um, the demo account to look at these particular things and try to make sense of what they mean. So these are the metrics, page views, unique views, average time on page, entrances, bounce rate, exit, page value. These things are very, very critical. And if you look, for example, you can see where the, the, the page, page views, the page that has the highest view and 
which is if you click on it um, and because we, we can't click on it um we can't click on it here but let's just leave that for now because we're really just trying to understand certain terms and then now we have the dimensions which are really the qualitative part of the data in other words it cannot provide with it, it there's no numeric value there all right we did this already so I'm, i but i as i said before i want for you to do we just wanted to revisit those particular terms before um, going further Ms. Scott, thanks for joining the class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you coming to the class 27, 27 minutes late? Sir, because I was trying to get some charge on my phone. Okay. Right. So let me hear what you're going to tell me next week. No, if the phone won't charge again. No, sir. Remember, I'm on class early. So when it reached the night class, yes, sir, my phone needs to get some charge. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yes, sir. So now we go a little bit more. You no, know, in you know, looking at the the report in terms of the various parts. So report areas, monitor user behavior. So how users move through the website. We're looking at the user journey, the engagement, the action. So some of this is as kind of repetition. So I'll say it again: content consumed and interacted with. In other words, which pages. Um, they interacted with and what on the page did they interact with and actions taken and conversions made is it that they entered anything into the into the cart if that is the case is it that they fill up the form did they subscribe did they say that they're going to attend an event whatever it is whatever your kpi is and they are looking at this you note know, inside so website optimization what they're saying is this that if you can when you look at the data and you're carrying out let's just say that you're carrying out a google advertising campaign you're supposed to be looking at the data and making certain strategic decisions. So if, for example, you see that um, you're getting more, more men are interacting with your products than women and vice versa, then of course, you can make certain adjustments to the campaign. You can concentrate in certain areas. So that's what this is about. The audience report now. So I'm going to show you a video of the audience report where the person is kind of walking you through the audience report. And this is a video that I, when I was doing my own program, I actually, in order to prepare for the, the Google Analytics exam, they kind of walk you through some of the things so that you can understand um, what is happening or how to make sense of the audience report in the Google account. All right, so pay attention. And as I said before, this is an assignment that is due and whether you come to the class early or late, you're doing it. Tell me if you're seeing my screen, seeing and hearing, did you hear that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah.
All right, talk to me about the audience report. What are some of the things that you can comment on? I am listening. Sir, yes. Sir, what audience report, sir? Did you just join the class? No, sir. You was gone for a while. I didn't hear anything from you. We were not hearing the video a while ago? No, Did sir. The you asked was... the video and we said yes. And after that, you went blank. So, all right, let me ask. Did anybody else hear the video? No, sir. After you... So said, why didn't you guys say something? The video was being played. Because we thought you went offline or something. So we saw no. you might mute it and so on. So no, I wonder if you stepped away. Because the video was being played. So you mean all this time we were wasting our time? No, I, I muted my mic because I know that sometimes when um the video is being played, there's a... All right, so let me try it again. Because I did optimize uh, audience report. So honestly, I was thinking that some technical challenges and you, you stepped off or something. All right, so tell me if you're hearing and seeing now. Yes, sir, hearing and seeing. All right. Audience reports are located under audience in the left-hand navigation. These reports can help you better understand the characteristics of your users. This can include what countries they're in, what languages they speak, and the technology they use to access your site but it can also include data like age and gender, their engagement and loyalty, and even some of their interests. Let's begin with the active hearing user report. Seeing? This can show you yes, how many users had at least one session on your site in the last day, seven days, 14 days, and 30 days. We call this site reach or stickiness. If your marketing activities and site content encourage users to visit and return to your site, the active users in each timeframe should grow. Next, let's look at the demographics and interest reports. The demographics report provides information about the age and gender of your users. The interest reports show your users' preferences for certain types of web content, like technology, music, travel, or TV. This information is useful in two ways. First, if you know your target audience, it can help verify that you're reaching the right people. Second, it can help guide decisions about your marketing and content strategy. Note that to see data in these reports, you must first enable advertising features in the demographics and interest reports for each property. Go into the admin tab under property and select property settings. Under advertising features, set enable demographics and interest reports to on. Once activated, you will see data in your demographics and interest reports about the age, gender, and interests of your users. Note that if you've just enabled this feature, it may take a day or two for the data to appear in these reports. Also, the demographic reports may not contain any data if your site traffic is very low or your segment is too small. The location report under Geo is one of the most useful audience reports. Google Analytics can anonymously determine a user's continent, subcontinent, country, and city through the IP address used by their browser. Notice the geographic heat map at the top of the report, which you can adjust to display different metrics. For example, switching the map to show percent of new sessions lets you identify potential new markets based on new user traffic to your website. This can help you decide whether to build awareness or invest in customer loyalty in particular locations. You could also use the table below the visualization to identify areas that have a high number of conversions or transactions, but low traffic rates. That can indicate untapped markets to target with advertising. Another analysis technique is to identify the regions where you already have a large audience, but lower than average performance. For example, if certain regions have a higher than average bounce rate or users that leave after viewing a single page, you might need to optimize your advertising or website. Perhaps you need to translate your ad or site into a local language or add geographically specific content. Below Geo are a set of behavior reports that help you understand how often users visited and returned to your website. The new versus returning report breaks out acquisition, behavior, and conversion goal metrics for new and returning users. 
you can look at this comparison over time to see how audience loyalty may be shifting. Consider your website objectives, as well as your marketing activities when evaluating the mix of new and returning users to your site. Underneath behavior reports, the technology and mobile reports can help you understand what technologies your audience uses to consume your site content. These reports can help you fine tune your site to make sure it's fully functional on different devices and browsers. For example, you can use the browser and operating systems report to quickly identify issues with certain browsers on your site. If your site has a comparatively high bounce rate on a mobile browser, you may need to create a mobile optimized version of your website with streamlined content and a simpler navigation. It's also a good idea to understand if users are migrating from desktop to mobile and plan your development accordingly. You can use the overview report under mobile to see a breakdown of your traffic based on smartphones, tablets, and desktop devices. Check this report to see how quickly mobile usage of your site has grown over time. The devices report lets you see additional details about the devices used to browse your site. This includes the mobile device name, brand, service provider, input selector, operating system, and other dimensions like screen resolution. These reports can give your developers and designers direction on how to create a mobile optimized experience to best suit your users. All right, so talk to me about some of the things you can report on, on the audience or for audience. Age and gender, sir. Can look at Dem age and gender. Demography. Serious. The, okay. the, the origin. Okay. The origin, yes. Language, interest. Okay. All right, so there are various things that you can comment on. All right. Let me share back my screen. Where is the screen share thing? Let me just share. Yeah. Tell me if you're seeing my screen. That says audience reports. Yes, sir. All right, so on the audience, there are various things as was said. So user insights, you have, um, some of this is going to look a little bit different because this lecture was created some time ago and Google constantly updates its interface. So there's various things that you can comment on, active users, demography, demographics, interests, behavior, technology, and so forth. So when it comes on to audience, you're looking at your, your audience reports help you better understand the characteristics of your users. Where are your users from? What languages do they speak? What type of technology they use to access a website? What is their age, gender, sex, and what are they interested in? Main audience reports, active users, how many users had at least one session in the last one, seven, 14, or 30 days? Um, Location report shows users continent, country, city through IP address of their browser. New versus returning, how often users visit and return to your website, technology and mobile report, which technology your users are using, for example, phone, tablet, desktop, etc. And which particular age group is interacting mostly with your, or at least is contributing mostly to your conversion rate, because that is really what you want to um, look at acquisition. Let's now look at acquisition. Okay. Didn't I hyperlink it? All right, give me one sec. I might not have hyperlinked this one. Oh, you know, I don't need to do this. I just need to go here because I think it's here. What's that position report? You should be here in this. Maybe that was audience. Yes, here's acquisition. Acquisition reports are located under the acquisition section. Left hand navigation. If you're seeing and hearing. You can use the acquisition reports to compare the performance yes, of different marketing channels. Okay.
Acquisition reports are located under the Acquisition section in the left-hand navigation. You can use the acquisition reports to compare the performance of different marketing channels and discover which sources send you the highest quality traffic and conversions. This can help you make better decisions about where to focus your marketing efforts. Before we discuss acquisition reports, it can be helpful to know how Google Analytics identifies traffic sources for your website. When a user lands on your site, the Google Analytics tracking code automatically captures several attributes or dimensions about where the user came from. This includes the traffic medium, source, and marketing campaign name. You can think of the medium as the mechanism that delivered users to your site. Some common examples of mediums are organic, CPC, referral, email, and none. Let's look at these different types of mediums. Organic is used to identify traffic that arrived on your site through unpaid search, like a non-paid Google search result. CPC indicates traffic that arrived through a paid search campaign, like Google AdWords text ads. Referral is used for traffic that arrived on your site after the user clicked on a website other than a search engine. Email represents traffic that came from an email marketing campaign. And none is applied for users that come directly to your site by typing your URL directly into a browser. In your reports, you will see these users as having a source of direct with a medium of none. Source provides more information about the medium. For example, if the medium is referral, then the source will be the URL of the website that refer the user to the site. If the medium is organic, then the source will be the name of the search engine, such as Google. Under All Traffic, let's look at the Source Medium Report in the Google Store Analytics account using the dates August 1, 2015 through August 31, 2015. This shows the sources and the respective mediums sending referrals, search engine traffic, and direct traffic to the site. Notice that the default sort is Users. To identify effective traffic sources, we can look at the source medium combinations with the most users. But that doesn't necessarily mean this was the best traffic. Ideally, traffic should be high quality, meaning that users who arrive from a source engage with the website or complete a conversion. A good indicator of traffic quality can be bounce rate. We can click into the comparison view and select the metric bounce rate to compare bounce rate for each source medium combination to the site average. Sure enough, we can see that our YouTube traffic is bouncing at a much higher rate than the site average. The Google Store may want to investigate to make sure that YouTube traffic is landing on a page that's valuable to those users. If we want to see only the organic sources sending traffic to the site, we could type organic into the filter. You can see that Google referred more traffic than any other non-paid source and had a relatively low bounce rate compared to the other sources. This means that users arriving from Google organic search are landing on highly relevant pages. Now, let's compare the performance for all of our various Google marketing activities that generated traffic by changing the filter to Google. We can now see that organic traffic was our biggest traffic source, followed by Google CPC, which represents paid search traffic using Google AdWords. This is a great way to add context to your analysis and understand which marketing activities are generating success for your business. There are other ways to view which traffic sources bring the most engaged users to the site. Using the channels report, we could view traffic by channel which bundles the sources together under each medium. Traffic sources are automatically grouped into basic categories, or channels, like organic, social, direct, referral, display, etc. Clicking into each channel will break out the individual sources for that channel. If you want to group your sources differently, you can create your own channel groupings in Google Analytics. We'll cover this more in an advanced course. If you want to view your traffic organized by which sites have linked to yours, you can look at the referrals report. You can even click into individual referrals to see which specific web pages link back to your site. 
if you want to understand which specific pages of your site are being linked to, you can add a secondary dimension of landing page to the report. This will show you which external sites are sending traffic to each of your specific pages and potentially offer you a source of new advertising partnerships with those referring websites. All right, so talk to me about the acquisition report now. What are some of the things that we can look at or should comment on? Hello? Sir, the medium, the source, and the campaign. So the medium and the source. Yes, I don't know about the campaign, but I know medium and source, yes. Um, for the medium, you have organic email, referrals. Mm -hmm. Anything else, people? Hello? I'm not hearing. Could you please project? CPC too. Well, she said she did say CPC. Cost per click. Is there anything else that was mentioned on the acquisition? People remember you're supposed to be taking notes. You also have to comment on high quality traffic. That's very important. Looking, for example, which um, medium is giving you a high or a low bounce rate and that you can also click on channel and click on referrals because you want to see which specific websites are, are giving you traffic and probably try to see if there's some amount of partnership. All right, so please bear those things in mind. Um, the lecture itself that I have created has a lot of things embedded in it. So let's just dig a little deeper in terms of acquisition. So that was just uh, from, play from, no, not from start. You're seeing my screen, right, people? Yes, sir. Yes. So on the acquisition, let's just go to it. So acquisition reports helps a marketer to understand where your users come from. They compare different marketing channels, as was mentioned before. They determine which sources provide the highest quality traffic because at the end of the day, you have to look at which traffic is actually giving you, uh, contributing to your conversion rate, and they help you to make better decisions in terms of focus, focusing your marketing efforts. So we did mention about medium and, um, and, and traffic source, and you won't want to ensure that you understand the difference between the two. It might come on your, your mid-semester exam. Every source has a medium. It's, it's the mechanism that brought users to your site. So paid traffic, this means Google advertising, cost per click, organic traffic, Google search, you know, the search engine, email. Many companies carry out email um, campaigns using MailChimp and other, uh, and other softwares. Referrals, meaning that traffic that is coming from other sites and direct, meaning that the person went directly to the site itself because they know the site. The source now provides more information about the medium. For example, if the source is organic, the source will be the search engine that brought you to your site. And I think there is a, there is a thing that I have that actually helps you to understand it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right, here it is. And I'm going back, but I'm just showing you this. So on this side, are you seeing that these are the sources? So the source in this case is Google, direct, Google, Bing, Ireland.com, Yahoo, Facebook, Facebook. And the medium now is organic, non, CPC, organic, referral, organic, social, social. Seeing that? So you can go back to this particular slide to, to, understand, um, to understand that. All right. Uh, Channels report, bundle sources together under the medium. So your default channels are organic search, display. What the, the point you have to understand about this, and we're going to look at it even in greater detail, is that when you are doing the different, when you're commenting on the different sections in your report, you must know, you must, you must um, decide what you're going to comment on um, to make sense to, for example, management. All right, so don't think you're going to comment on these very easy things to talk about sex and, and, and age and all of that. There must be a broader discussion you're having. 
about it because you have to link most of these things to your KPI, which is your conversion rate. All right. So China's report bundles, as said, that already referrals report sites other than your search engines that link back to your 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 uh, back to yours, and it could be for and it says add a second secondary dimension of landing page and the ads was demonstrated in the video that that is another filter that you can use to look at to see which um um referrals or which other sites are sending people to your website and this is how many people for example they seek out um partnerships with other companies we're going to do this activity but let me just get through the lecture because we're going to go into the demo account the google google demo account we looked at this already we said that traffic sources this is just kind of repeating some of what we said before in terms of acquisition report you comment on channels not tree maps source medium and referrals and there are other things you can look at you can look at adwords you can look at social you can look at campaigns all right, so the channels, we, we did talk about the channels. Um, it was mentioned in the video. These, these are just examples of the channel, organic, direct, paid, and so forth. We did mention this a while ago. Um, you don't have to look at the accounts, not for this. You don't have to look at queries. Social, you don't have to look at social. You don't have to look at campaigns, all right? Because you will find out that Google is, there are so many different levels. So I have, I'm at, I think I'm at uh, advanced level or something of the sort. I don't remember what the certificate says. It takes, it's a, it's a lot of information to digest. It's very specific. It's very, um, it can be very frightening, especially in looking at so many numbers. And, I, and this is why I'm stressing, I'm literally spending two weeks on Google at, um, Analytics because I get a sense that you yourselves are kind of trying to figure out the information. So I've tried to package this lecture in a way that is a little bit more palatable for you to understand the information. Um, customized report, this is acquisitions report. And they are just showing you different things that you can look at in terms of acquisition, some of which was mentioned before. We're going to look, for example, when you're in terms of time periods and so forth, when you go into the report. So now we're going to look at the behavior reports. Is there any question on acquisition report? Any question? Any question? All right, so there's no, no yes. Okay. So. So let's now look at behavior. So let's just look at behavior. Let me stop sharing because, oh, you know, I never needed to do that. All I needed to do was to go here to behavior. You can find the behavior Tell me if you're hearing and see my screen. In the left-hand navigation. Yes, sir. It's important to understand how Google Analytics calculates behavior. You can find the behavior reports under behavior in the left-hand navigation. It's important to understand how Google Analytics calculates behavior data. If you recall, Analytics uses a small piece of JavaScript code on your website to collect data. Every time a user loads a page on your website, this tracking code creates a page view that is reported in Google Analytics. Analytics uses this to calculate many of the metrics in behavior reports. For example, the total page views metric is simply the sum of each time a user loaded a page on your website. Let's begin by looking at the All Pages report, located under Site Content, and scroll down to the data table. The page views metric shows how frequently each page on your site was viewed. By default, this report will show data by the page URI. The URI is the part of the URL after the domain name in the location bar of the browser. If you switch the primary dimension of the report to page title, you can view this report by the title listed on the web page's HTML. Other metrics in the All Pages report, like average time on page and bounce rate, indicate how engaged users were on each page of your site. You can sort the report by these metrics to quickly find low-performing pages that need improvement or high-performing content to guide future content decisions. The Content Drill-Down Report under Site Content groups pages according to your website's directory structure. You can click on a directory to see the pages of your site within that directory. This is especially useful if you're trying to understand the performance of content in a particular section of your website. If you switch to the pie chart view, 
you can quickly see which sections of your site are most popular with your users. The landing pages report, under site content, lists the pages of your website where users first arrived. These are the first pages viewed in a session. You can use this report to monitor the number of bounces and the bounce rate for each landing page. A high bounce rate usually indicates that the landing page content is not relevant or engaging to those users. The exit pages report under site content shows the pages where users left your site. Because you don't want users exiting from important pages like a shopping cart checkout, it's a good idea to periodically review this report to minimize unwanted exits. The events report tracks how users interact with specific elements on your website. For example, you can use this report to track when users click on a video player or a download link. Event tracking requires additional implementation beyond the analytics tracking code snippet, which we'll discuss in more detail in an advanced Google Analytics course. All right, so talk to me about behavior. What are some of the things that we can report on in Google Analytics in terms of behavior? I am listening. Yes, people, talk to me. I'm listening, people. What about behavior? What can we comment on on the behavior? Did we understand it? Were we seeing what was being said? Hello, Adrian, okay. Aldine, why are you guys not talking? So I don't understand that one. Don't understand it? All right. Is that, Natasha, what about you? Or Natisha, sorry. Ms. Reed, were you paying attention? Moisha, what say you? Sir, I just didn't ever understand that one. Oh, you were the one that said that. Adrian, what say you? Sir, I was listening, sir, but um, I wasn't really connecting behavior with what the presenter was talking about. What do you consider to be what do you consider to be behavior? Well, you said behavior are things such as the, the interest. No, that's not behavior. Sorry. Behavior is what they are doing on the website. Oh, so that, so so that um the interest don't come into play there, sir. As no. in what they are interested in. Well, yes, to some extent, but I want for you to think about behavior in a very practical way. So okay. where are what content are they interacting with? Which pages are they viewing? How long are they staying on the pages? Things like that. Are they, are they for example, going onto one page and then leaving in, um, quickly? Let's look at some of the content. Let's see if that helps you to understand um, this part. And this is why I kind of do the lecture this week, because I want for you to understand the different sections. Are you seeing my, you're seeing my screen, right? Yes, sir. So behaviors report shows which web pages your users interact with, which pages had the most page views, which pages had the highest average time on page. In other words, the length of time that was spent by the, um, the user and which pages had the highest bounce rate, which means that the page or pages that had a user going um, visiting only one page. And they're look, these are the specific things that you can comment on, um, comment on on the behavior. Landing page, the page your user begins your site to visit on. Quite simply, how they land on your website, which particular page on your website uh, they entered. Content drill down report, views performance of groups of pages according to your site's directory structure, particular useful if you use blog folder. So remember we talked when you said content, you're looking at which content on your web on your website is is the user or users interacting with. 
exit pages, which pages are they in your site? All right, we're not going to do this yet. So let's look again now. So behavior now, you're, you can comment on these specific things, these specific things, landing page, most popular page, page load times, search on site, events, interaction. And then they're giving you some example now in terms of behavior. One metric for behavior is bounce rate. Another metric, um, so one metric for behavior is bounce rate. That's what they're, they're, they're giving you. And they're giving you, for example, when it says events, you're talking about when the user starts interacting with the page. And they're giving you, for example, session search, total unique searches, results page, um, exit, average search depth, time after search. They're giving you, these are some of the metrics that you're going to comment on. Um, so behavior support, external links, video interaction, did they play, pause, time watched? For example, if it is a content website and you just put out a new video did they for example watch the entire video or did they just click on it and say oh i don't like this and they and they went on because it could be that if it is for example a, a content website you want them to be spending a lot of time on reading if for example let's say you're excel so which is a leads um, generation website when they came on the website which pages did they, first of all how did they reach on the website um, which pages did they interact with? And if it is that you're carrying out a campaign for them to sign up a form, like a lead form, did they sign up the form or did they start signing up the form, but, but it was left incomplete? Things like that. So that's what they're talking about. Think about behavior as what is the user doing on the website? All right, and they're showing you, for example, and again, this is just a repetition of what was being said before. You don't need to get so technical with some of these things. We're not going to do the conversion support because I think it's going to be a little bit too technical. So we're going to leave that. So when it comes on to micro conversions, what they're saying is that things that are done on the website, but they don't necessarily impact sales. If it is a if it is an e-commerce website, but for the macro um, conversion now directly affect the bottom line of the business by either contributing to revenue generation or redu reducing costs. In our case, the number of students that actually enroll. All right, so now we get into comparing trends and that is really what, so let me stop sharing and I want for all of us now to, uh, let's not go here, let me share. So let me just stop doing this. Can you, no, let me go here. No, that's not what I want. All right, you're seeing this. So in Google, we let's just go to google.com. Are you seeing what I'm doing, google.com? Yes, sir. You go to demo report, go, no, not demo report. You go to Google demo account. You click on it, usually it's the first link, and you look for access the demo account, access the demo account. Oh, a quick question, did we sort out our Tumblr account? Alma, um, Almarine, did you sort out your Tumblr account? Yes, sir, I, saw, I do the Tumblr account, but the link to the Google Analytics, that's the part I haven't really grasped as yet. Did you, did you reach out to Adrian who, so, um, was going to assist us to do that? Um, Adrian advised me that he set up his, but he just sent me the attachment that you sent to the email to say that's what he had used. So I'm just trying to figure it out. Okay. Adrian, I thought you said you are going to make your friend help her to do it. So when I, when I spoke to Almarie, she never started. And since she started, she never said anything further to me. Okay, so, All right, so please start it out because for you to do what I want you to do, you have to start that part out, okay? Or well, the first thing I want for you to do is to groups of um, two groups. I know some persons are not here now, so, but as I said before, you have to do the work. So whether they're here or they're not here, that's not my concern to be very honest. Um, do I group you or do you group yourself? Or do I allow the, 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 the breakout room to group you? Sir, we group for ourselves, sir. Oh, you already have, you're already in groups from your previous classes, so you're just going to work with those groups, right? Yes, sir. 
All right, so who's group, who are the persons in group one? Which group are you in, Al Marine? Is it one or two? Sir, I was about to ask you that question. So we have two groups in the class, right? Yes. Okay, so I guess ours will probably be group one. I guess me and Aldine and Adrian, I'm not sure how many persons in the class, but I'm seeing six right now. So Almarine, Al Adrian, and? Aldine. And Aldine, okay. I'm not sure if Tamara is in our group or if she's with um, Moesha and so Renee. Not Moesha, no, by default, no, I'm going to do it that way. So Reed, Scott, and so there are how many persons in the class? Five, because they can't count me. Sir, so, my group is Stuart, Scott, and Tamara, sir. Your group is Stuart, Scott, and Tamara? And Stuart. Stuart? You mean Stuart Miller? Or there's another Stuart? But Renee is Stuart, sir. Oh, Renee is Stuart. Okay. All right. Sir, so, it says not in the group. Say that again? I think it's a lot of us in the class. I'm not sure. Yes, I am not sure either because I have a register, but I'm not seeing everybody. So, but as I said before, know that you understand who you're working with, you know your groups, whatever assignment I give you, you just work on it, all right? So are you seeing my, my screen now? So when you come here, people, when you come here, you're going to see audience, right? Seeing audience? Hello? Yes, sir, we're seeing. Yes, you have to talk to me for me to know. So on the audience, remember we said that on the audience, there are several things that we can look at, right? So we can look at, for example, so we see the overview. So here is audience on this side. So we see the overview and on the audience, there are several things we can comment on. So we are seeing, for example, let's click here, audience. No, this is the one that we should look at, the overview. And under that, we can comment on several different things we can comment we can click on demography or demographics age we can click on gender we can click on interests i'm not going to all of that you can click on geography mobile and so forth but what is important look here for me people this section, are you seeing this section? Yes, sir. You yes, have to, yes. This section now, it allows you to look at, for example, when you click on custom, today, yesterday, last week, last month, last seven days, last 30 days. And then now, so we, let's just say we look at last month, we click apply here. Right, and it gives us a sense now. Let us go back now. Let us say, let's go back to overview. So we are seeing for this particular, for from, from February 1 to February 28, there were 51,000 users. And of that 51,000 users, there were 47,000, roughly 47,920 new users. There were 65, um, thousand session and I'm just approximating you had 1.2 number of sessions that is the average time spent on a page on the website there were 289,000 page views which mean that even though you have these this total users the users were interacting with uh, with more than one page so there's a lot of activity going on you had the page per session this is the um, the page per session, if my memory serves me correct, I don't want to tell you, I actually have the definition written down because I sometimes I, I forget. It is the, you're looking at the page, you're looking at the, the difference between page views and the number of sessions. The bounce rate is a little bit high because it's, we, we, we were cautioned about what the, it's not supposed to be about 50, right? We can look at country, and I think some of this was said before. We can look at country, we can look at city, we can look at operating system, we can look at screen resolution. There are several things that we can look at. We can look at, for example, here is acquisition, because we said that we are going to look, and here is behavior. So let's look under acquisition, and let's look at overview. So we are seeing direct is the 
uh, the, the biggest way persons are reaching or reaching on Google merchandising store and so forth. Look at all traffic. We can comment on channels. So we can see that the biggest channel is direct. And what we can look at, for example, the revenue. So direct has contributed, for example, $6,408, and it is 82% of the overall money that was spent. We can see that there is no spend from social because there's zero dollar here. There's no spend from affiliates or display ad because, and of course, display ad is really not about conversion but awareness. I hope you're seeing what I'm I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes. If we click on source medium, if we click on source medium, we can see these are the various sources. These are the various sources. So the sources on is direct. And the medium is non Google. The medium is cost per, um, cost per click. We can see some of those particular things, and we see direct again. Of course, as was said before, let us look at dollar value. Um, even though, so let us look, for example, at this one. This this is a referral site, right? Even though we, it only had sixty six users. If you look, for example, at the revenue it generated, it generated what? $50. But look at, for example, organic here, 90, 98 users, but it generated what? Only $20. So having more users does not, is not synonymous with what? Revenue. Fair enough? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go down to behavior. And remember, now we're looking at the last 30 days overview of behavior, which is where we were kind of. We're seeing page views, we're seeing unique page views, we're seeing average time on page, we're seeing bounce rate. We looked at some of that. Um, I don't want to get into selecting a metric. No, I don't want to. I don't want you guys to. It's probably going to be a little bit too much here. Uh, behavior flow can be a little bit, it's kind of the funnel, it can be a little bit, but it says the landing, uh, should I, no, let, let's leave this one alone. Side content, this one is not so, so bad at all. All right, so we're looking at side content and we can go here. So in terms of side content, these are some of the things that are there. Content drill down, this is really what I want where they are, right, so where, which, where are they interacting? So this is sign in, they're interacting in sign in. We're seeing, for example, people are going into the store, we're seeing people going to payment, things like that. So as I said to you before, people, it's not, I, I, it's not something that I want, is what I want from me is not going to be exceedingly difficult because I'm going to actually show you another example. So remember now, for you to comment on anything, you have to click here, right? And you click on custom. Yesterday, last week, last month, last seven days. So let's say last month. Compare. And again, last month, which is the same thing that we were doing. Let's do a, compare it to, all right, so this is really the kind I'm going to give you where you're going to compare it to the previous year. I'm going to give you a date, and you apply, and you're going to compare it to the previous year, which now is, this is now where you're going to have to make certain strategic decisions in terms of what am I presenting in my report. Let's go to audience, let's go to overview. All right. So in, in this case, can you tell me if, the, if, if sales increased or decreased from 2020 to 2021? So we're looking at the month of February in 2020 to the month of February in 2021. Sorry, block with, but I would say there is maybe an increase, sir. What would cause you to think that there's an increase from, the, from February 2020 to February 2021? Um, because at the end of February, there was an increase. I had done when it started in 2021. 
Yes. So because so we're seeing that there's an increase on it on February 27. Yes, sir. So it's higher here. We can actually, if we put the cursor here, you get some metric here. You kind of get metric. We get the metric here, and then you can actually compare here to get a sense of what is happening. All right, and again, you go back through now, looking at users and things like that. All right, hold on. Let's go back to the lecture because there's something I'm going to show you. Give me a sec. Sorry, let's go back to the lecture now. Lecture. So comparing trends over time, analyze the KPIs by adding context through segmenting and create an action. Well, that part you're not going to do. So when it says total visitors to site, when, this is a basic equation to know if you have actually accomplished your, your, um, your conversion. So this is, total visitors to site is somewhat self-explanatory. What they're talking, when they say micro conversions, it means that things that are done by the user that, that do not necessarily contribute to the bottom line of your site. So they're saying that if you have a lot of visitors and the visitors are taking actions on your, on your site, it, it leads to macro conversions and the reverse is true. So if it is that you're having a problem acquiring visitors to your site, it therefore means that the, the, the actions on your site will be less, therefore me, which would lead to lower macro conversions, if not none at all. And the opposite is true. Acquisition success, many visitors, visitors to your site who are interacting with your site leads to a lot of conversion. And this is an example comparing to February 2018 versus February 2017. You go here, it's just showing you what you do. You go here, you make a come, um, you click here, and they're showing you now how, you, of course, you realize that the sales fluctuated throughout, um, throughout the month. That is quite understandable. And you might find that if you look like at, at the calendar, let's look at February uh blue february 22 it's which day so february 22 sales are a little bit down but if you usually sales are much higher on the weekends or on weekend days so that is something that you can pay attention to as well So it says that orders in February 2018 is six percent lower than February so you can actually see it here here it is it tells you when it says order, orders in February 2018 is 6% lower than February 2016, you can see it here because there's a negative. And this is the, the purchase, the purchase completed goal. You can go to the goal section to see the whether or not purchase are, are persons are making a purchase. All right. Am I am I is everything okay? Are you understanding? Hello. Sir? Okay, basic equation, and they're showing you, what he's just showing is that because the, 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 the visitors to the site went down and therefore less interaction, it affected the conversion rate. Again, now they're showing you, this is the audience report, and you can see some of the things that are being commented on in terms of audience. And there, as I said, you, if you hover over it, you can see that, um, you can see specific data, you see that, the users um, increased. You have new users, you have the session, you have various things, the bounce, the average bounce rate is less. Um, you're looking at different things. We're seeing that we have more, we have 82, I think this is saying in this case, there were more visitors 
than um, in, in 2018 than versus 2018. But as I said before, what is going to happen is that you have to look at your own, you have to, at least you have to go in and look at it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to make some sense of it. Let's do some practice on our own. This is another, and all, all this is really doing is just to show you because this is from, this is for a month, November 1 to November 30, and you're looking at sales. You see that there was a significant drop in terms of users, significant drop. They never, they didn't get new users. So the session negative has mean that not, people are not spending a lot of time on the website. All right, they were not spending a lot of time on the website. And again, they're showing you that if the, if the acquisition is down and even if the micro conversion is up, it might still lead to a drop in macro conversion because there's not much visitor doing a lot of things on the website. And here's an example. Here's an example. So an example of audience comparison report on Google merchandising demo account. And if you look at this example, and this is actually how yours should look because it's going to be in PowerPoint um, form. 55 point, they're, they're comparing August 2019 to July 2019, 5.3% um, increase in users, 6.64% in users, uh, increase in new users, things like that, just giving you different metrics. These are, this is something that you have to digest on your own. And again, audience um, comparison, they're showing you, for example, the top five countries, the gender, the age group. And as I said before, yours should look um, similar to this, okay? So you're not doing anything that is difficult because all you're really commenting on is users, new users, session, increase, decrease, number of session, increase, decrease, number of, and you're comparing it between the two years. That's all you're doing. I think this is for a month. Was this a month? Yes, this is a month, July to August. This is a month. This is actually my assignment that we did in Canada, my, myself and my group members that we got an A for, of course. I said this already, audience comparison. We are looking at, um, for example, things such as increasing mobile, where, what are they using um, to, to, access the, to access the Google merchandising store. Um, there was a 1.19% decline in desktop. In other words, most persons are now using mobile or they're using tablet, which actually makes sense. That actually makes sense. More persons are using mobile as opposed to um, tablets. Here's an example now of a behavior report. This is an example of a behavior report. So they look at the bounce rate. You can comment on the bounce rate. They're looking at the, 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 the page views. In other, in other words, how many pages are being used by, um, are being interacted with by the user. They look at the exit page, whether it is increasing or decreasing. The top three best performing pages over time, over the period. Um, top three worst performing pages. And what this could mean is that um, you, can, you can make a recommendation to management that either they need to take this page off or something is wrong with the page. If it is a payment page, you need to find a way to help the persons to actually make payment. All right, things like that. The behavior page, you don't necessarily have to comment on this because the funnel thing can be a little bit confusing if you don't really understand it. So this says the behavior flowchart identifies the path users travel through, through the website. It reveals several key alarming issues. The starting page is how what, 68,000 sessions, and I'm hoping you're seeing that, which, which, which was an increase. However, a high number of drop-offs um, in terms of 95% and several declines compared to the previous. Class. And if you look to some, ex to some extent, there is a drop over time. But of, of course, I said, you don't have to comment on this one. Another example now is acquisition um, comparison report. And acquisition, again, is talking about where people are coming from to your website. You're seeing the top channels, in August versus the top channels in July. And they are just giving you the top channels and then they look at the top sources and the top medium. Google recorded a 2.7% um, change over the period. And all you're doing is just really speaking about trends, high, low, and things like that. All right, you don't necessarily have to comment on the acquisition um, comparison, but you can see, for example, that you're not getting, you're losing persons at on Facebook 40, 47% if you look at the if you look at the uh, if you look at um, where persons are coming from, these are the top five social network sources: YouTube, Facebook, Google, Reddit, and WikiHo. Reddit is very big in Canada; it's not necessarily big in Jamaica. The Google groups: there's a 53% decrease 
Reddick, there's a 500% increase, which could mean that you need to go and do a lot of advertising on, on Reddick because you're seeing a 500% increase. You could do some amount of advertising on WikiHo because it has a 6% increase. All right. Acquisition, the top five best performing campaigns. You can comment on that. Of course, all the information is available in the Google demo, um, demo account for you to comment on. We don't want to do that. All right, any questions? Any questions? Sir, I don't have a question, but I, I, I want to suggest something, sir. Yes. Sir, I don't know if you can like, like for each um, class, sir, if you could come with less uh, notes, sir, because you're going too fast and it's becoming overwhelming, sir. You have to watch the, the you have to watch the recordings to kind of digest the information. So yeah, in this case, some of this, stuff. yeah, but some of this is repetition because I've, I'm actually repeating the information that I gave you last week. Did you watch the, 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 the did you get a chance to watch the recording? Because I deliberately started by re actually repeating. And if you look, if you notice in the lecture, some of the information is repetitive and I'm deliberately doing that deliberately repeating the information so i know it can be overwhelming but at the end of the day you have to kind of digest it and probably it's because of the hour of the evening that you're doing the class you know it's late and you're tired but at the end of the day i have to do my job in terms yes. of um, of delivering the content and i'm trying to yeah and you notice i'm trying to break it up in just not me just talking but using videos and stuff like that for example what i'm going to show you now is what you should do um i'm going to show you a video where that person actually walks you through everything i've just said which again, repetition. So I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I have to provide you with the information. I have to, have to, have to. I'll do my best um, in terms of trying to make the information as simple as is possible. Uh, where am I going? Where am I going? I think I had it open. General. So I hear your I hear your um, suggestion, but um, you have to see how best you can, you know. That's the first time we're doing digital marketing. Service. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, man, I know, I know. I, I I'm very much aware of it of, of that. Right. Uh, for age, I'm gonna take you through. Some so let's look at this. Metrics using Google Analytics. The best way to learn Google Analytics is sign up for a demo account. For it's a Google and hearing. merchandise store. The Google Merchandise Store is an online Listen. retailer that sells Google branded merchandise. We're on the page now. So what this person is going to do is to somewhat walk you through some of what I've said before in terms of commenting on this, what this means and what that means and all of that. So again, I'm trying to do a lot of repetition so that you know you'll um, you'll do. I'm sure you guys will do a very good job. And if you if you if the first um, if you do the the presentation. And it's not as nicely done as I want it. I'll give you the opportunity to make corrections because my job is not to fail it. And I know Google Analytics can be difficult because it was difficult for me to understand. And I don't understand every single thing about it. Um, but I, I, there are some parts. I, I don't teach the part that I don't know. The parts that I know, I teach. And I, and I can tell you that Google Analytics is not just a course. It's, there are several layers of Google Analytics, several layers. You can actually do a bachelor's degree in Google Analytics. All right, so let's just listen. And as you can see, and I'll, I'll fashion, move along to some extent. Uh, bags and drinkware store. Because so that's is, what we're going to do. We're what he's showing you here is the actual account. the store itself, Google, the, the Google uh, merchandising store where they sell you know caps and all of that. They actually sell merchandise. That will see the back end of the Google merchandise store and allow us to analyze the number of sessions, the number of users, uh, how much revenue they're generating, and where the traffic is coming from. To gain access to the Google Analytics demo account, you just need to type that into Google and the first result that turns up will take you to a Google page which will tell you about how they're providing the get demo account to you to help you learn how to use Google Analytics. If you scroll down, you'll see a link that says access demo account. Okay? That is going to provide you with access to the Google Merchandise Store's Google Analytics account. As long as you're signed into Google, you should go straight through. 
If not, you might need to sign in. Okay, so now I'm inside Google Analytics. And specifically, I'm looking at the back end of the Google Merchandise Store. So right now, we're looking at an overview of information about the page. Um, the first thing that we might want to change is how much uh, the day period um, our analytics are reflecting. Uh, so right now, we're really just showing the last week. So let's change that uh, to the last 30 days, okay? So we're gonna look at the last 30 days of information. Okay, so what has happened on the Google Merchandise Store in the last 30 days? Well, we can see some key basic metrics on this first page. There's been 44,000 users on the Google Merchandise Store in the past month, okay? Of those 44,000 users, 42,000 of them were new users. It's the first time that they've been to the Google Merchandise Store. Of those 44,000 users, they actually conducted 57,000 sessions. So sometimes a user went back twice or more times and they visited the site multiple times over the period, the one month period that we looked at. So on average, the number of sessions per user is 1.3. So over the course of the month, okay, the average user visited the site 1.3 times. Now when a user visits the site during a session, they might not just visit one page, they might visit multiple pages. So the number of page views is obviously going to be a lot higher than the number of users. Even at the start of this video, I viewed many pages on the website, not just the first page, the home page that I, was, uh, I arrived on. Um, so as we can see, over the course of the month, the Google Merchandise Store has had over 230,000 page views. So if we divide the page views by the number of sessions, you can see that the average number of page views per session is four. Because Do we understand that? So in other words, the average, what they're saying is that the average time spent on the page, the average time on the website led to about um, the user interacting on average four pages. Understand that people? And he's just really walking you through what these things mean, making it um, you know, very simple. I, when I, when I, I was searching through some videos that would kind of help you to understand um, even more. And I found this video very, very useful. Are we understanding so far? No, I didn't tie it, so I didn't know. answer me. Are you guys understanding? Sir, we're listening, sir. You're listening. Yes. But are you understanding? I know you're listening, but are you understanding? Not everything, sir, but I mean. Okay. Call this the average page depth. So the average page depth for a Google Merchandise Store visitor is four. How long are they spending on the site? Well, on average, they're spending two minutes and 49 seconds. This is our average session duration. So a typical session lasts two minutes and 49 seconds. Some will go longer, some will be shorter. Uh, and the final figure we have here is the bounce rate. Okay, so the bounce rate is the number of um, times that a, a new session um, is finished after the person has viewed just one page. So they arrived at the home page and they realized this is not what I was looking for and they left, okay? So they didn't stay around, they didn't look at other pages on the website. So the bounce rate for the Google Merchandise Store is relatively high, it's at 49%. So 49% of all users bounce after visiting the first page. They don't stick around, they're clearly not buying anything. Um, they're just going to the home page and then leaving. So this is what we would call some of the basic metrics uh, it gives us a basic understanding um, of what is happening uh, on the Google Merchandise Store during this period. Uh, we can see it on a day-by-day on a -day basis and how it fluctuates. Um, and obviously there is um, you know, a bit of a lull during the, the weekends uh, and it picks up a little bit during weekdays. Um, so that's pretty typical of a retail store. Um, we can also see this bar graph here that shows the number of returning visitors compared to the number of new visitors. Um, and we can see the language um, that most people are, are visiting the site in. Um, so, you know, the most majority of users are, 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 
uh, visiting the Google Merchandise Store in English. Um, in terms of the country of origin, um, as you could probably imagine, the majority of users are from the United States. Um, but also there's a, quite a lot of people from India and the UK as well. Uh, and specifically, there's probably some cities, uh, even within the United States, um, that are getting driving a lot of traffic. Uh, and uh, New York, um, San Francisco, um, Toronto, you know, in North America, but also London and Singapore, the, the hubs of, of IT um, are all driving a lot of traffic here. Um, we could look by browser as well. Um, so where are all our um, users coming from? What browser are they looking at it from? Now, is this a Google merchandise store? So, you know, there's probably going to be a little bit of bias for Google browsers. Uh, so Google Chrome actually is the highest number of users with 76% uh, of people who visit the Google merchandise store visiting using Google Chrome. Uh, right now I'm using Safari, so I'm one of the 16%, um, but then we have the other, the other browsers. Uh, we could also look at the operating system. Um, again, Windows users probably are more favorable to Google than, than Mac users. So, uh, we see this uh, higher rating here. Uh, iOS devices are a little lower than Android devices. Again, Google owns Android. Um, we could look at it by service provider. We could look at it uh, by our operating system, um, et cetera. Um, if you look on the tab here under audiences, you see a number of other ways of looking at the um, audience information. Uh, let's just have a look at some basic demographics. So who are the people who are visiting the Google Merchandise Store? Um, as you can see, um, in terms of gender, uh, they are typically male. So more men are visiting than women. Um, uh, so a ratio of, of six to four, okay, 60% of men visiting the site compared to 40% of women. Uh, and there definitely seems to be um, a younger crowd visiting the Google Merchandise Store. Uh, so people aged between 25 and 35 are the, the key demographic, 18 to 24 um, is also quite high. Um, we could look at this in more detail. Let's click on the age tab itself. And we can see for each age group, um, you know, who is actually uh, spending more time on the site, uh, who's spending, creating more sessions, uh, who is bouncing more, only visiting one page, and who's sticking around longer. And can we actually look at the conversions as well? So who is spending more money? Um, so the, the, the highest users of the site are those aged between 25 and 34. So we have over 8,000 um, users, 40% um, of uh, the visitors over the period that we're looking at. Um, and they created over 10,000 sessions, which is far more than any other, or, um, than the other groups. Um, the bounce rate for the 25 to 34 year olds, you know, is pretty similar to the other groups. Um, you know, they have um, reasonable pages per session of around four. Uh, the 18 to 24 year olds are a bit lower, so they're not viewing as many pages and they actually have a higher bounce rate. In terms of average session duration, um, you can see that the total average here is around three minutes. Um, that doesn't vary a lot by age group. Um, and in terms of transactions, you know, over the course of the month, the, the Google Merchandise Store has only had 10 transactions. Okay, so clearly Google's not making most of their money from the Google Merchandise Store. Okay, you know, they're, they're making money in other ways, um, but, um, you know, they're providing us with this data so that we can analyze it. So they've actually only sold um, 10 things on the store uh, in the last month, okay? And who purchased those things? Well, uh, three of the transactions came from 25 to 34 year olds, uh, and they spent $300 in total. The total revenue was $700, okay? Uh, so then we could look at the conversion rate uh, for each particular age group. And, you know, it's quite poor all, all around, but I guess uh, seeing as they made two transactions, um, but there are only a very small amount of users. The older group, actually, the 55 to 64 year old group here, actually has a higher conversion rate than the other groups, okay? Uh, although those conversion rates are pretty low all across the board, if you were an online retailer, you had those levels of conversion rates, you'd be very disappointed and be something that you really need to work on. Um, but I have a feeling that most of the traffic being generated to the Google Merchandise Store um, is simply people like us, 
were visiting the Google Merchandise Store uh, to have a look at it to see the data behind it for the demo account. So they're not real potential customers, they're people who are looking at it uh, because they're just curious of what the data reflects. Okay, so we've looked at uh, the audience tab. Uh, now let's have a look at the... All right, so do we have a better sense of audience now? And there is silence. Talk to me, people. This is the third time we're looking at audience. We're silent. Natisha, Moisha, Almarine, Aldine, Adrian, talk to me. Hello. Are you guys there or is it that I am in the class by myself? I know you're logged in. Sir, I'm here, but to be honest, I'm just trying to really get what's going on because I miss one class, sir. So okay. I'm trying to understand the information. I'm trying to, you know, wrap my brains around everything. That's... Okay. Did you get a chance to look at the, the because I posted the recording on my YouTube channel. Did you get a chance to look at it? I haven't as yet, sir, because I was having some challenges because of some changes that I made. So, you know, I was having a little challenge, but I'm trying to catch up. So, okay. Okay. So next class I should be. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Adrian, what say you? You're next on my participants list. Is it that Adrian is no longer there? Moisha and Nat Natisha, what's happening with you guys? I noticed there's, a, there's silence and I'm a little bit concerned. I'm seeing somebody talking in the chat. Yes, Moisha says, yes, sir. All right, I'm, let me see. And okay, Moisha says, yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to know the person is moving on to acquisition. So I just wanted to find out. If the, the acquisitions tab. Under overview of the acquisitions tab, you find the various channels for which people have arrived at the Google Merchandise Store. So as you can see, the most common way people arrived at the Google Merchandise Store was through organic search. So they've typed in Google Merchandise Store into Google and one of the search results that turned up was a link to the Google Merchandise Store itself. Of course, they could have typed in something else like Google Merch or Google Apparel, Google T-shirts, uh, but the link that turned up that they clicked on was for the Google Merchandise Store. Not everyone arrived in that way. Some other people typed in the URL directly. So they might have knew www.googlemerchandisestore.com, okay? And they directly went to the website. Uh, referrals are web links. So for example, the, the link on Google's demo account, uh, which links back to the Google Merchandise Store, uh, would be considered a referral. Uh, and social media are links on uh, Facebook or YouTube, etc. Um, we could also look at the bounce rate, okay? Uh, so of all of these channels, for example, uh, which channel has the highest bounce rate? That was display. So the display ads that Google is running for the Google Merchandise Store um, are not working particularly well. One, they're not driving a lot of traffic. Only 743 people arrived at the website uh, by clicking on a display ad. And of those 743 people, 73% of them only visited one page. So they clicked on the page, they didn't like what they saw, and they left. They didn't go through the process to add items to the car uh, and check out. 73% of them did not view more than one page. Um, and for an online retailer, we can of course look at the conversions, okay? So we can see the number of conversions. Now there are only 11 conversions over the month, uh, so we don't have a lot of data here. But we can see that for paid search, that was actually resulting in the highest number of conversions. So traffic from paid search where someone has typed in Google Merchandise, and then a paid search ad has appeared at the top that says uh, Google Merchandise Store, uh, buy your Google Merchandise here, um, and they click on that link. They are the most likely type of traffic, the most likely type of individuals to actually go on 
and buy something from your store. Um, we can look, click on the links here and, and get more detailed information. So for example, if I click on social media, uh, then I can see specifically what social media sites are actually driving the traffic. So over 2,000 of my users um, came from social media, uh, and the majority of them are coming from YouTube. Uh, so there are probably YouTube videos just like mine, uh, which has a link to the Google Merchandise Store. Perhaps I'll put a link below. Um, and their driving traffic, 1,770 users uh, for the month actually came uh, from those sorts of uh, you know, links. Uh, Facebook, um, et cetera, uh, are driving traffic as well, but not nearly as much. Now, as we look through you know, for social media, uh, the bounce rate is quite high, you know, 60%. Um, you know, let's look at the pages per session. Uh, it's around three, which is, is lower than our average of four. Uh, they're spending 50% less time on the page uh, than our average um, session user. And uh, essentially they're buying nothing, right? So they haven't spent any money. So social media is probably not a very attractive um, channel for us for the Google Merchandise Store. Or perhaps a better explanation is that because of the demo account, uh, and the YouTube videos that help you understand the demo account, um, that are most of the traffic is actually coming uh, from that, not people who are actually interested in buying uh, anything from Google, uh, Google branded merchandise, et cetera. Uh, while we're in acquisitions, let's look at one more uh, piece of information. Let's go down to Google Ads. I know that Google does run the occasional ad for the Google merchandise store. Uh, I think they do it uh, mainly just to create data for us to look at uh, within the demo account. Um, and uh, let's have a look at um, the, the search queries uh, that uh, people are typing in um, that are resulting in people clicking on our paid search ads um, and uh, then potentially uh, buying something on our website. Uh, so what's the number one search item? Google Merchandise Store here. Uh, 560 people clicked on uh, a paid search ad because they typed in Google Merchandise Store into Google. Uh, Google Merch, Google Merchandise, Google Apparel, Google Shares. You can see uh, the figures below. Um, how much did we spend? Well, how much did Google spend uh, on acquiring these customers? Um, they, they paid Google Ads uh, $508 in total for the month. Um, so they're actually you know, moving money from uh, the Google Merchandise Store to Google Ads uh, to pay for the traffic that they've acquired through the ads itself. Uh, so the, how much did they pay? The cost per click on average uh, was um, 38 cents. So it was actually uh, a little less for the Google Merchandise Store, which is driving most of the traffic, um, but more for other areas like uh, Google Shirt. Okay, obviously there's probably other um, apparel companies that are, are using that information. Uh, so in total, they, uh, you know, uh, we can look at the users, sessions, um, the bounce rate, people have clicked on the Google ad and then bounce rate. All right, and you away. see that these are some of the things that I can comment on, on the acquisition. I know it's a lot to digest people, but as I suggest to you that you just spend some additional time going through the content, going through the information. And as I said before, there are only three things, three broad headings that I wanted to comment on, and that is audience, acquisition, and behavior. I also sent an example prior to the class, um, an example of, our, of how it should look and um, the general design of it, and I also included it in the lecture, this lecture that I emailed you prior to the class. So I know it's a lot for you to digest, but I, I humbly suggest that you sit down, go through the recordings, and, uh, and um, try to understand what is happening, okay? Hi. Have a good evening, yes? Before you go, um, I have a question as it relates to the the coursework. Yes, um, I'm going to email the coursework to you. I haven't sent it yet. Okay, okay, I was wondering. And it will have the and it will have the rubric and everything. And all it will be about is just for you to be making a comparison between, for example, February of 2017 with February of 2018, and just commenting on these things. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be anything that is very difficult. 
All right, so enjoy the rest of your evening, people. Enjoy your weekend. Is this weekend Easter weekend or is it Holy Thursday, Friday or something like that? Yes, sir. All right, so all those who are religious, you can, you know, do whatever makes you um, happy. But enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the Easter holiday. Try to, you know, be safe in terms of COVID and everything, but also in terms of the criminals that are out in their numbers. Um, all the best. And if, you, if anything, you can reach out to me via WhatsApp. If you're still having any challenges, but you can't be asking me questions that I in the class, you have to go and watch the recordings though, because some questions you're going to ask me is because you have not watched the recordings. All right. I did sir again. Somebody had was going to say something or is going to say something. No? No, sir. I was just saying right. there's next. Okay. All right. So bye guys. Okay, thank you, sir. Alrighty.